Oklahoma's governor, Kevin Stitt, decided, you know, a lot of people in my state struggling with poverty, I could help them out. My focus could be on those issues. But instead, I'm gonna go ahead and attack the transgender community and ensure that no one can declare themselves non-binary. So the biological sex designation on a certificate of birth issued under the section shall be either male or female and shall not be non-binary or any symbol representing a non-binary designation, including but not limited to the letter X. And that is a direct statement from the governor of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt. Now, uh, this was in response to outrage in the state uh, when it came to people who wanted to declare themselves non-binary. And I just wanna remind you all, um, this is just about how people want to identify that has absolutely no negative impact on other people's lives. And it is a insane, it's an insanely small group of people. So like, even if somehow you're offended, okay, uh, this kind of thing really gets your dander up. Like, oh, I can't, mm, and I want to control how people identify. Um, tiny group of people has no impact on your life. You know what does have an impact on your life? Economic policies that you know hurt you and your family day to day, which Oklahoma should be focusing on, but they're not. Now, um, the Oklahoma GOP has been brewing this culture war since last year. Last year, an Oregon resident who had been born in Oklahoma sued the state's Department of Health after it declined to allow them to be identified as non-binary on their birth certificate. The State Department of Health added the option in a resulting agreement. And that's what caused a meltdown among Republican lawmakers in the state. But I just wanna warn you guys, like some of them might genuinely get upset about this stuff, but when it comes to these issues, the reason why they, they're hyper focused on it is because it allows them to make it appear as though they're governing, makes it appear as though they're doing something. In reality, they're not doing anything to help anyone in their state. They're just passing legislation to make a small group of people in their state more miserable than they need to be. That's what this is all about, okay. And by the way, it does make their lives miserable, right? Because it's denying their identity. And I just want, I, I'm very curious, right? So for all of the right wingers who do get up in arms about this, uh, for the Joe Rogans of the world, for all the guests that go on his show and they're like freaking out about this kind of stuff. I, I just want them to explain to me what it does to their lives, right? So like, even if I, even if I was a rabid right winger and I didn't care about the trans community at all, like the idea, and by the way, I do, I'm not a right winger, right? But like, it's a strange thing to be up in arms about mm -hmm. when it has no impact on your life whatsoever. It's like when you take a step back and you look at this situation, John, all it is is no, I just I just want to make these people more miserable than they need to be. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all it is. I want to exercise my right to call them whatever I want to call them. Mm -hmm. I want to take away any type of right they may have to identify the way that they actually feel gender wise. Yeah. That's all it is. Does it does it help you sleep better at night? All the it Oklahomans might. that are living in poverty right now, you sleeping better? Is it, is it paying your bills? Is it sending your kids to college? You feel good about yourself? It, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Think about how these policies actually impact your life. They don't in any way, but they make others miserable for no reason other than maybe you're miserable and it makes you feel better to make other people miserable. I don't know, but it's nonsense. That's part of it. And and it's and it gets people reelected because people get duped into thinking these lawmakers are actually looking out for them. They're not. They're not doing anything to help you out actually. Yeah, it's uh, look. This is why we talk about how there is uh, even less distinction between right-wing politicians and media than there ever was, because they are all working together to accomplish the same goal. The right-wing media, which is one thing, it doesn't matter if it's if it's Fox News or if it's Ben Shapiro, it's the exact same thing. They all have the exact same goal. Uh, tells people over and over and over again, you should be terrified of these people. You should be terrified. They're coming for you. They're coming for your kids. Whatever, insert whatever group. They're all coming for you and they're all coming for your kids. Whether they're Guatemalan migrants or trans people in a bathroom, they're all coming for you. So you should be terrified of them. And so you make people scared of them and make them not think of them as humans. And then anything you do to hurt those people is inherently good because those people are bad. 
They're fundamentally immoral and you're better and purer than they are. And you should feel good the more you do things to pen them in. And so the right wing media tease them up, identifying a group that you are allowed but also encouraged to actively hate and fear and be jealous of and suspicious of. And then the right wing politicians deliver on it. Because that, that is actually what some of their base wants, not a lot. These anti-trans bills aren't even popular. They're not even particularly popular in right wing states amongst right wingers. But for enough, it's popular and so they get to seem as if they're delivering for their constituents. Right. Now, I, I think you were a little bit dismissive. I can't say for sure that stopping people from identifying as non-binary makes people as satisfied in their lives as stopping them from being evicted from their homes or not having medical insurance or something. I think we should do some interviews though. <laughs> as conservatives are getting booted from their homes, mm-hmm. interview them and say, Oh, okay, I understand this is a this is a tough time for you. But, those but does it make you feel people, better? Yeah, transgender people, am I your right? Your guy had your back. I mean, yeah. okay, you've you just set up a GoFundMe to pay for your cancer treatment. That's rough. I'm sure it would be great to have insurance, but I don't know. There was a trans swimmer who can't compete anymore. Does that make you feel better? No, obviously we don't believe any of this. And the, the bizarre perverted thing is that we want those people to be able to afford their housing. We of want course, them to have health insurance. We want them to be able to send their kids to college and be able to retire with dignity someday. But my my point is, you ain't gonna get that. Not with these people. You ain't gonna get that if you're if you're gonna give lawmakers a pat on the back for passing legislation that doesn't benefit your life, but just makes other people incredibly miserable to the point where by the way suicide is like overrepresented within the transgender community because they're already miserable they have no rights they have no power they're hated on in this country they're targeted by the most powerful people endlessly yeah. endlessly imagine feeling proud of yourself for nonstop attacking targeting the most powerless group of people in the country mm-hmm. pathetic absolutely pathetic um, so you know what, I just wanna get straight to what the reality is in Oklahoma. Because it's one of the poorest states in the country, much like other red states that focus all of their energy on making people miserable rather than making people's lives better. So uh, a report ranks Oklahoma the ninth poorest state in the country. It's pretty high up there, you know, it's 50 states. With a median household income of just 49,176 bucks. That's the median, okay, right in the middle. Oklahoma is one of only 10 states where a majority of households earn less than $50,000 a year. In a break from the national trend, conditions did not improve for many of Oklahoma's poorest citizens over the past year. While the US poverty rate fell from 14.7% to 14% between 2015 and 2016, Oklahoma's poverty rate remained effectively unchanged at 16.3%. One out of every 6.2 residents of Oklahoma lives in poverty. Now, I don't share those details with you to point and laugh at Oklahoma's electorate. A lot of the people who are living in poverty end up sitting out elections. They don't participate because they know that these lawmakers aren't really gonna do anything to improve their lives. But maybe it's time to get active in states like Oklahoma. Maybe it's time to wake up and realize that the individuals who get galvanized by this hateful legislation are the ones who end up showing up to the polls. They're the ones who end up reelecting these goons who again, do nothing to better your life. You know, and this is what I talk about when I say, maybe Twitter becoming even more awful is a good thing. Because maybe that will persuade people to get off of these social media platforms, connect with people in their local communities, organize and and try to pass local legislation that actually does better their lives. Or organize with their workers to change their immediate conditions, their immediate environment, right? I just, we need to find ways to get out of our homes, canvas, organize, communicate with people, stop being atomized because they're winning. These are people who end up getting the pat on the back because again, they give this illusion of fighting, governing for their people. They're not, they're doing nothing to make people's lives better.